Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So today I have brought to you the current affairs of the weekend as well as today. So let's begin the class. Guys, this is the live schedule for the RBS ABN Award and this is our mobile application. If you haven't downloaded it yet, do download it and scroll uh, down the application, uh, explore the app, okay? So the very first question that we have is, where is the Padmaja Naidu Himalayan Zoological Park located? So here guys, the right answer is West Bengal. In Darjeeling, this park is located. Now what is the news exactly? The news is that Central Zoo Authority has released a list of the top uh, zoos of India. So this zoo has stopped that list and because of that it is in the news. So do remember the location of this zoo as well as the zoos which are following it because these uh, zoo and their location, this consists of your strategic awareness. Okay, so from that perspective also you need to know which zoological park is where. So this Padmaja Naidu Himalayan Zoological Park is in West Bengal, Darjeeling, West Bengal. And following this park is the uh, Aringar Anna Zoological Park in Chennai. So from Anna, you can remember Chennai, uh, which has secured the second rank. Then we have Chamarajendra Zoological Gardens in Mysore. Okay. Then we have Alipur Zoological Garden from Kolkata. So these are the third and fourth positions uh, held by these zoos and this information was released by the central zoo authority and where is this authority located this is your first question of the day so this is guys uh, the padmaja naidu himalayan zoological park and the animal which you can see behind me is a speciality or you can say the uh, this park is known for this animal and one more thing that when i googled the Padmaja Naidu Himalayan Zoological Park, the pictures of it, I only found these pictures. So you can yourself judge how much importance does this animal hold for this park. So this is Red Panda, uh, which is the speciality of the Pad Padmaja Naidu Himalayan Zoological Park. And you also need to be aware of this fact. I hope these cute pandas uh, are there in your memory, will be there in your memory till the next year when your examination is coming up. Okay. The next question is, which edition of the National Board of MSME was chaired by the Union Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Minister Narayan Rane recently? So there was a meeting of the uh, Board of MSME, which was chaired by the Union Minister and the edition was 18th. Okay. So at the meeting, there were certain announcements uh, which were made. Okay. So first, uh, thing is that a dedicated portal has been launched. A portal has been launched for the MSMEs in the Northeast region and Sikkim. So this portal is specifically for the Northeast and Sikkim MSMEs. Then Udyam and National Career Services. So I hope all of you are aware of the Udyam portal. Guys, this is the Udyam registration portal for the MSMEs. And by registering into this portal, the MSMEs can get access to a lot of government schemes okay so this is the government portal uh, operated by the ministry of micro small and medium enterprises so here this portal has been integrated with the national career service now what is the benefit of integrating these two portals the benefit is that all the job seekers can get the opportunity to work in the MSMEs or vice versa. So the MSMEs will get an opportunity to hire the skilled and aspiring youth or the job seekers, whatever you want to say. The next information is that an MOU has been signed between Ministry of MSME and the Common Services Centers uh, for the Udyam registration portal. So basically, this center is going to help the MSMEs in registering on the portal okay obviously everyone is not that literate and educated or tech savvy uh, should be the more precise term so everyone is not that tech savvy therefore this, these centers of the ministry of electronics uh, and information technology help the people in onboarding onto different portals as well as onto different schemes of the government the third question is Recently, Niti Aayog has hosted the first anniversary of Shunya campaign. 
which of the following statements aptly describes the objective of the campaign so here you have the five statements i am giving you two to three seconds read out the statements and then you can uh, answer it in the comment section below okay so as far as the answer of this question is concerned it is it aims to eliminate the pollution causing vehicles from india and it is very easy to us uh, guess the answer of this question as well if you didn't know the answer of it because every option is similar it is the one which is the odd one out here so uh, the basic purpose of this shune campaign is to eliminate the pollution causing vehicles delivery vehicles okay focus on this so delivery vehicles uh, like we have the vehicles operated by the zomato swiggy etc etc so all such delivery vehicles should be zero polluting vehicles should be zero emitting vehicles and this initiative is taken undertaken by niti ayog along with the rocky mountain institute which is a us based institute and its indian branch okay and this campaign was launched last year in 2021 the basic purpose of it i have already explained to you to make them zero pollution uh, zero pollution emission uh, vehicles and to boost the electric vehicles uh, in this sector to give a boost to the electric vehicles in the delivery segment so that is the basic idea moving ahead recently national commission for protection of child rights has announced to provide the access to all state commissions for protection of child rights on the e pal nidhan portal when was the portal launched so this portal was launched in 2015 a very basic news it is the national commission has given the access to the state commissions for this e bal nidhan uh, nidhan portal now this portal was created under the section 13 of the C cpcr act 2005 again a non relevant or i should say irrelevant information is given here don't focus on that uh, just need to uh, focus on the year in which this e bal nidhan portal was launched and the basic purpose of it is to provide the a uh, grievance redressal uh, to the victims so here guys this e balidan is an online portal wherein any person can register a complaint reporting any violation committed against the child and after such registration the complainant will get a complaint registration number so that is the basic idea and this is the e balidan portal so here you can see the mechanism of this uh, portal for new registration uh, here has to be clicked the next question is recently union education minister dharmendra pradhan has inaugurated ramakrishna mission awakening program for students of classes 1st to 5th this awakening program is an initiative towards ensuring overall personality development of a child in line with the philosophy of national education policy 2020 ramakrishna paramhans was an indian Hindu mystic and religious leader who lived in the 19th century what is the birth place of the philosopher so that is the question that has been asked from you so what is the right answer here the right answer is west bengal now before going into the details first let me ask you a question tell me which committee prepared the national education policy 2020 i know it is a repeated question i have also asked this question many a times before as well but this is important that's why i keep on keep asking this question again and again so that you would never forget this so tell me which committee prepared this nep 2020 and in which year was that committee formed okay coming to this news guys this is a very basic news i hope uh, you all have covered the national education policy the basic agenda of that policy was to make the child uh, a responsible citizen and the uh, education policy focused on the overall development of a child at the school level as well as at the college level okay so in uh, in order to fulfill the objectives of this national education policy only this mission has been launched so basically the philosophy or the ideas of ramakrishna paramhans will be taught uh, to the school children of classes 1st to 5th and the program will be named as awakening program now if the, 
the child is taught a little bit of spirituality and if the child is introduced with himself then it will be a greater opportunity for the child to explore his interest and be happy in the life i hope you all are aware of this fact that nowadays the burden of depression among the youth is very very high and the main reason behind that is the lack of self awareness according to me this is the precise reason and if you are feeling depressed then you need to introspect yourself are you fully aware of yourself do you know who you are if that is the question you are asking yourself then you are on the right path and if you hadn't asked this question so far do ask it from yourself okay so in my opinion if such uh this uh, program is definitely going to help the children in their overall development because then they will become more responsible towards themselves towards their families towards their society once they grow okay so that is the basic idea and it has been launched under the national education policy so uh uh so it is written only here that value based educational programs for the classes 9 to 12 will be given under the nep 2020 so guys he is the ramakrishna paramhans now there is one more information that cbsc is going to create an advisory framework for ed- for encouraging value based education from the very basic to the higher education level bal vatika to class 12 so that we can create a pool ready or a talent pool ready for challenges of life and committed to national progress and global welfare so that is the basic idea and he was the philosopher in the 19th century born and died both in west bengal now guys we have talked so much about the national education policy so i'm just going to give you a brief of the policy so that you can remind what you have read in the policy so guys i hope all of you are aware of this structure earlier 10 plus 2 was the structure now the structure has been divided into 5 Uh, plus three plus three plus two years. Okay, it is five years. Okay, sorry, it's reverse. Five plus three plus three plus four. Okay, so here, guys, five years are devoted uh, by the child in the education. So the education starts at the uh, age of three. So it is the early childhood care. and education which will be given to the children in anganwadi schools and balwatikas so 3 to 6 years then classes first to second year so the child would be of 8 years when he would be in the second class and there would be no examination at this level because this is the foundational stage the child is made to uh, accept the schooling system uh, and accept the children the peers as well as the teacher then the preparatory age starts from 3rd to 5th class and here the examination will be introduced then the next 3 years would be 6 to 8 and here the middle age starts so here the children will be taught higher subjects then the 4 years 9 to 12 so here a very revolutionary step was taken by the government that is to intermix the streams or you can say nullify the streams now a student can read any subject of his or her interest okay so that is the basic idea now there is no stream as such for the child so this is the basic schooling structure that has been revolutionized by the nep 2020 and the college structure is here so here you have the multiple entry and multiple exits if you exit after doing one year of your graduation you will be given certificate after two year diploma three year bachelor degree four year bachelor degree with research so that was the college level revolution and right now the government is working on these two drafts so this is the national higher education qualification framework under the nep 2020 and this still being worked upon it is just the draft that has been released but the basic crux of this framework is to uh, standardize the higher education qualification standards what kind of education would be given how would the assessment be done and etc etc all of these informations would be there and in this framework and there is one more framework national skill qualification framework okay that uh, that aims to inculcate or integrate the vocational studies with the higher study so that is the basic idea of these two frameworks which are still under construction you can see so i hope 
you are right now reminding of the national education policy it was a revision for all of you okay so the next question is which state has launched the value added agricultural mission which is known as vam so here kerala is the right answer now this mission has received the cabinet's approval and the basic purpose of this mission is to double the farmers income in the state okay and how are they going to do that they are going to basically provide the technologies and focus on the production methods and providing every kind of support to the farmers so that the value addition to the agricultural products can be done at the grassroots level and the farmers can get most of the benefit out of that value addition okay so that is all about this mission the next question is what is the current share holding pattern in the regional rural banks so here you have been given different options out of which option c is the right answer okay central government holds 50% state holds 15% and the sponsor bank holds 35% so you would see that there is no stake of rbi so does rbi regulate rrbs or not this is your question right so here my friends understand this point that rbi has even if rbi has held any stake in any of the banks or agencies which it regulates you must have noticed this trend that rbi is now selling out its stake like it does in nhb it also did that in nabard so it is selling out its stake because if rbi has to regulate perfectly it cannot hold any stake in the agency which it is regulating therefore rbi does not have any stake in it but does only rbi regulate the rrbs no rrbs are also subjected to dual regulation first is by rrb the all the kind of banking function of rrbs is regulated by rbi whereas the management and other kinds of functions are supervised by nabab so this is the dual regulation uh, for the rrbs now why are we discussing about rrb sudden because the ministry of finance has released new guidelines for the rrb so let's discuss those guidelines so guys these are some of the rrbs this is the example and here uh, is the picture of one rrb you can see so it is just to get you acquainted with the rrb if you are an urban dweller so okay so what are the new guidelines or what new uh, rules for the rrbs the new rules are related to the issuing of ipos or shares in the market okay we are going to discuss that but first know that the uh, details the regulations are related to the issuing of shares so that the rrbs can raise money from the market so here the ministry is saying that if you want to raise money from the market you first need to offer the bonus shares to the existing shareholders and and yeah, or you need to uh, offer the rights issue okay you need to undertake the option of rights issue so what is it why the government is doing that let's discuss that first of all know this fact that there are 43 rrbs in india sponsored by 12 scheduled banks and 21892 is the number of branches operated by these 43 rrbs and this data is very very crucial it can be asked in your upcoming esi paper so here is the share holding of the uh, government and the bank in the rrbs so what is the guideline the guideline is saying that if you are issuing if an rrb is issuing shares in the market obviously new shareholders would come up and this would dilute the share of these bodies so what is the benefit of these bodies or the existing shareholders so in order to incentivize these existing shareholders the ministry of finance is saying that before issuing the money into the uh, sorry shares into the market the bank need to consider the uh, issuing of the bonus shares okay that is the one thing second thing is that ministry of finance is saying that if you are not issuing the bonus shares or bo bonus share is basically at the whim of the bank if the bank is in a position to offer the bonus shares only then it can offer but rights issue should be done by the banks now what is the rights issue i hope all of you are aware of these ba basic terms so if you no don't know about it let me tell you 
rights issue is basically if this rrb is selling its shares in the market before going to the market it has to ask its existing shareholders whether they want to buy the shares or not and for those shares the existing shareholders have to pay the money whereas in case of bonus shares there is no money paid by the shareholders because that is the bonus and bonus is for free okay so that is the basic idea or difference between the rights issue and the bonus share so what the government is saying that first offer the shares which you want to issue to the public to us if we are willing if we have the money then we will invest in the company and we will buy more equity that is the basic first requirement that the ministry is saying now if any one of you is thinking about the dilution of the government's share in the bank then you are on the right lines my friends so will the issuing of ipo or fpo subsequently dilute the government share in the banks yes obviously you need to think about it that if the share if more shares are provided to the shareholders and more shareholders are onboarding on the rrbs shareholders are what the equity holders so if more equity holders are there then obviously the existing equity holders shares would be diluted so it is a sort of privatization you can say okay because you can clearly see the central government owns 50% state government owns 15% and sponsoring bank are all the scheduled commercial banks okay 12 scheduled commercial banks are uh, owning 35% stake in these rrbs however there is one more guideline given by the ministry of finance that is that the state governments need to protect their 15% stake in the rrbs okay so this would remain intact however it can happen that the central government share or the bank's share would go down in rrbs with the introduction of new shareholders okay so that might happen but you can say that the government share is definitely going to die so that is about the new guidelines i hope you have understood it and found it interesting okay so this is written only now eligibility criteria for rrbs to issue the money to the public the shares to the public obviously not every rrb is eligible to issue the money in the uh, the shares in the public so first is that at least 300 crore rupees should be your net worth in the preceding 3 years in each of the preceding 3 years minimum capital to risk weighted asset ratio should be above 9% and 9% is your basic requirement track record of profitability that is pre tax operating profit of minimum 15 crore for at least 3 years out of the previous 5 years excluding the extraordinary times like we had the covid period now the rrbs should have return on equity of minimum 10% in 3 out of the preceding years and return on assets should be minimum 0.5% in 3 out of the preceding 5 years and all of these guidelines are really really crucial for all of you first of all these guidelines are not likely to change in the near future secondly these are the regulatory guidelines they can be asked from you in your nabard csi paper because regional rural banks come under the supervision of nabard itself and this is a very recent news okay so if any nabard student is watching me please cover this okay secondly even if in this year your uh, this year this question is not asked definitely it can be asked in your rbsb or nabard next year okay so from that perspective also all of you should be aware of this news and try to memorize these eligibility criteria moving ahead who has been appointed as a president of society of indian automobile manufacturers in 2022 to 23 so here guys sanjay kumar is the right answer and he is guys sorry not sanjay kumar it's vinod agarwal i myself got confused sorry it's we know the government who has been appointed so he is guys the ceo and md of volvo iker commercial vehicles at present and he has been appointed as the president of the society of indian automobile manufacturers which is which is a self regulatory organization for the automobile industries which company is the most valuable brand of india according to kantar brands so it is guys tcs so tcs has overpowered or 
you can say replaced hdfc bank which used to be on this position for uh, since 2014 okay so this is a very huge time period for which i hdfc had retained that position last question is which com which country has won the saff under 17 championship 2022 so it is india okay so this is indian team and it has beaten uh, nepal do remember the championship took place at race course stadium colombo sri lanka so here guys this video ends i hope you have enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching it